1981 was a year of profitable productions in the horror field, in particular, in the representation of werewolves, creatures present in practically all ancient cultures, a monster that, as we know, represents the fusion between men slash women and animals, something that probably seeks to explain since the most remote times, the violence and rage inherent in humans. Before entering into the analysis of Greedo de Horror, a short classic directed by Joe Dante, inspired by the novel by Gary Brandner, I would like to make a brief excursion through the historical process of formation of the figure of werewolves, something also done in the reflections on um werewolf americano in London, curiously released in the same year. Since Greek mythology, the social relationship with this monster has been established, as it is from these bases that we have the formation of the term lycanthropy. It is said that King Lycon of Arcadia received Zeus during a visit and made him eat the cooked innards of his own son. This is one of the explanations for the magical transformation of the human being into a wolf, resulting from a divine punishment, something explained through other animals in the most varied cultures that form the extensive melting pot of the world's popular imagination. Other explanations seek to understand this phenomenon economically, as the myth can also be explored within a historical bias, since children were offered as human sacrifice, part of rituals that aimed to appease the furious wolves that devastated extensive flocks of sheep, based on sustaining local economic processes. There are additional ways of explaining in more detail stories that were not formed basically from exclusively literary sources, but that were adapted based on the observation of elements of the culture itself, a legacy that extended to the following centuries and won the cinematographic culture vertiginously. Given the potential of this material for the elaboration of dramatic conflicts and the development of narratives aesthetically focused on the ominous and violent, as occurs with Greedo de Horror, orchestration of fear based on the script written by John Sayles and Terence H. Winkless, narrative accompanied by the soundtrack of Pino Dinaggio and his always peculiar scores. There is also a link with Rick Baker, horror makeup artist, consultant for the work with the werewolves carried out here, creatures developed by Rob Botton, in collaboration with the efficient animatronics of David Allen's team. In short, a competent production group aimed at presenting us, throughout the 91 minutes of narrative, the plot around Karen White, D. Wallace. She is a journalist who has the displeasure of encountering one of the most terrifying moments of her life while precisely trying to appease a trauma. About to find the criminal Eddie Quist, Robert Picardo, while working on a report, the young reporter searches for the scoop and even gets the material for the broadcaster, but is in the killer's sights and almost has her life taken. The incident creates some deep scars and his psychiatrist, Dr. George Wagner, Patrick Magnay, indicates the need for a break from tempers, even giving the address of a colony to reach these moments of tranquility. What should be, in turn, the counterpoint of urban stress becomes a sum of moments of horror when she discovers, in the worst possible way, the presence of a secret society of werewolves in the region, frightening monsters that forever transform history of your hectic life. With a very peculiar mythology, but full of elements already culturally established in society, Greedo de Horror brings to the scene an interesting approach to werewolves, inferior if we stick to comparative criticism with the motto of an American werewolf in London, also from 1981. Something I don't think is important for understanding the value system surrounding the film considered a cult classic by many interested in horror and lycanthropy in film. In addition to Karen White's trajectory, the narrative highlights the character's husband, Bill, Christopher Stone, a man who will need to contain the sexual drive of the rituals contemplated in that colony, and Fred, 
Kevin McCarthy, an integral part of its social dimension, a co-worker on the journalism team at KDHB, the station that will be the stage for an ending with twists and turns and a lot of monstrosity. Furthermore, to make the film work and function to the point of becoming a reference in the relatively recent cultural imaginary, we have John Orr's assertive cinematography, efficient in several aspects, but highlighted especially for his lighting work and relationship with the importance of the play of contrasts between light and shadow, an allegory for the narrative itself, functional also for the production design of Robert A. Burns, Correct in his composition of internal and external scenarios to establish the ideal atmosphere for a film about werewolves, rituals, and curses. Before closing, I compliment the panoramic approach of the opening with the reaffirmation of the rhizomatic rooting of werewolves in the most diverse cultures that form the long narrative tradition of our societies. In the historical basis of these monsters, we have Turkish references that present in their folklore, the figure of the werewolf as the transformation of shamans into wolves during certain rituals. In the unfolding of Swedish folkloric traits, werewolves were women who had the ability to paralyze cattle and children with their piercing gaze, a sense that in Haitian culture reflects the popular image of these monsters, creatures known for their red eyes and cunning when stealing. Children from certain spaces and takes them in the middle of the night to perform transference rituals for their respective curses. With elements from various formative processes around their mythology, the werewolves in Greedo de Horror work well, they really frighten and do not move between scenes with just any look, worked as already mentioned, and a set of aesthetic aspects that make them legitimate. Horror Monsters If maybe it had a slightly better story and the development of the narrative with a more magnetic pace, it would be even better than it is, that is, just good. <laughs>